Colbzocker0007, and in today's video, I'll be doing an overview of what's on my phone. So this video will be divided into three different sections. A lock screen section, which will have stuff that I just have on the lock screen, which is a pretty small section. My favorite apps section, which is a general area for anybody who wants to check out some apps that I recommend for anybody on Android. And the last section, which is probably the coolest section, is the hacks slash mod section. In that section, those are some rooted hacks and mods that um, separate a phone from basically generic phones. There are a lot of cool things, and I think you guys should definitely check them out. Now, before anyone asks, yes, my phone is rooted, and a lot of the coolest features you will see in this video are from root. So if you do not have a rooted phone, or if you have no idea if your phone is rooted or not, then your phone is not rooted, and most of these features you cannot get on normal stock Android. Now I would suggest though, if you aren't rooted, to go to the app section and definitely check out the apps I like because those apps are not root apps, they're just generic apps that anyone can use. With that said though, I'll give us a general breakdown before I start. Um, my phone is a Nexus 5, I am running Android 4.4.4 .4, which is the latest one out. I have the ROM Dirty Unicorns, which I'll have in the description below as well as I'm running the Franco kernel, which I highly suggest for anyone running a Nexus device. Besides that, I'll get pretty much started now. Um, before I start though, like I, I like to say though, I'll have all the links to pretty much everything you've seen in this video in the description below. Um, but I, and I will put next to it root if you need root for that thing to work. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and we'll get started right now. All right, so now it's time for the lock screen. So we'll start from the top. The top uh, clock and weather notification there is Dash Clock. Dash Clock is a free application you can get from the Play Store. Works with any Android device that supports our lock screen widgets, which is 4.1 up, I believe. And you get extensions for it, so it can display pretty much anything you want it to display. So I have weather, calendar, missed phone calls, hangout messages, and Gmail. To the left of this page, I have the calendar, a calendar widget, which is built into my ROM. And then on the, all the way to the right, I have a simple camera app, which I'll be getting to later. So probably the first thing you noticed when you saw my unlock screen was my unlocking password mechanism. This is called not code. It's achieved using exposed framework, which means you require root. It's simply a two line, four square dot area. And what you do is you tap the areas in a certain order up to eight different taps. And once you do the correct, the correct combination, it unlocks the phone. It's pretty cool and I highly suggest it if you have a rooted phone. All right, so now it's time for the home screen. I forgot to mention I'd be doing the home screen early in the video, but I am, so we'll get started. So right at the top there, I have a widget called Beard for Zooper. It's a collection of widgets for the Zooper widget um, application. It costs about $2, I think, on the Play Store, but it's worth it, it's a lot of really cool widgets. That's just one of them. The phone message and email widget is all together as one, and so and the calendar widget is a separate one. Both of those widgets were made by someone on my color screen. Um, they're not on the Play Store at all, they're just part of his layout. I just kind of took them from his layout and put them into mine. I'll have a link for his uh, page where the, these are on in the description below. Now I'll show you guys a little stats bar feature. If I pull down from the left hand side of the screen, it goes into the transparency or the uh, notification area, but if I pull on from the right side of the screen, then it goes into the tile section. Also, you'll notice that I have a battery bar, which is a little bar. Um, it's hard to see, but it's right at the top there, and it kind of just shows how much battery I have, and when I'm charging, dots will fly onto it. As well as, it also shows my current download speeds um, next to the Wi-Fi or data toggle. Alright, now I'm going to go through some of the apps on my phone. I suggest pausing the video through the app screens to definitely check them all out. I'm not going to go through all of them because I do use most of them, but I'll go through some of them. First of all, I will answer why I have three camera apps if you didn't notice already. Um, first of all, one was installed through my custom ROM, one's the Google camera, and this one right here is my favorite one, which is actually a, a ported version of the OnePlus One phone camera app. It's pretty awesome. I'll have a link for it in the description below. Some other apps I like to use on a daily basis would be 9gag, 8fact, Chrome, um, Eye in the Sky, which I show pretty soon, um, 
Feely, which is this right here. Feely, I forgot to have my data on, so it didn't open up correctly, but Feely basically allows you to add multiple websites so that you can kind of browse through all their articles uh, at once. This is the Franco kernel updater. It's pretty simple. Uploads, updates the Franco kernel. Eye in the sky. This is an awesome weather app. If you're looking for weather app, this is the one definitely you should check out. Um, it has nice icon sets. You can change the icons right from the settings. It's pretty sweet. Instagram. Also, obviously, it's just plain on Instagram. Some other apps I like to use though. Uh, ins or hey. Talon, which is this one right here. It's an awesome Twitter app. Any anyone with an Android phone should get this app. A lot of cool features like being able to uh, preload a, a link in a tweet before you even go to it. Um, sliding gestures. It's pretty awesome. Also, the another app I like to use a lot would be t uh, Today, which is this app right here. Uh, it's a calendar, or calendar app. It's pretty awesome. It's much better than the calendar one. It looks much nicer. I love it. Another app I like to use a lot is Exposed. Uh, Exposed is for rooted phones. And a lot of the mods you're going to see upcoming here soon uh, in this video are achieved through Exposed Framework. Now it's time for the best part of this video, the mods. These are things that are modified from the normal Android. Starting off with slidable nav bar. So normally on a Nexus device, you cannot slide the navigation bar whatsoever. With a cool little mod that I have, I can actually slide the nav bar back and forth and have different toggles here. So here I have like Wi-Fi, GPS, data, Bluetooth, Bluetooth and airplane mode. And then all the way to the left, I have music controls. These are awesome. This is probably one of my favorite mods on my whole phone. So now I'll show you guys another modification, the tiles. And tiles isn't a modification to Android, but the amount of tiles that I have and the size and the functions are modifications. So here, if the one I'm tapping right now is screen timeout, so I can change how long it takes for the screen time. So I have other ones like reboot, um, immersive mode, um, compass, go to sleep, GPS, lock screen, which will actually disable the lock screen. So I have a lot of pretty cool ones. Here is the settings app. This is a modified settings app. It actually is a stock settings app, but using an exposed framework uh, module, I can actually, I changed it to a hollow white with black icons, and I like the look of it overall. So I'm gonna show you guys some of the dirty tweaks. This is a customization area of the Dirty Unicorns ROM. So you can change a lot of different things in here. I'm not gonna show you guys all of them because it'd be a long, long video, and this is gonna be long enough. But there are some cool things that you can change the transparency of the of the pull down menu, um, even this really cool one actually, app circle bar, which you can turn on by tile, and you select the apps that you want, and they put it into this little carousel of flipping icons, and you can actually pull them out from any app, and then launch them in a split view, or different things like that, but I'm going to show you guys the split view a bit later. Unfortunately, you can't see it because of the white modded uh, status bar there. But actually, my clock is in the middle of the status bar, which is a different modification compared to normal stock Android. I've also shrunk down my nav bar compared to the stock Android height. Uh, normally, it's 48, so this is how it's supposed to look like. So I shrunk it down all the way to 36. Sometimes I go 30, but usually 36 is the sweet spot for me. Also, if you guys didn't notice, I did change the actual soft keys using an app, which I'll have in the description below. Buttons of layout, uh, this is something I enable sometimes, not all the time. Um, I can actually add and modify um, the buttons that are available. So I can put menu and search buttons permanently there. And you guys can see now I have a total of five buttons there. And when I reset them, they just kind of slide back out again. Now for navbar ring, unfortunately you can't see it in the animation, but I have it set up um, different from stock Android, where instead of going to Google now when I pull up, it instead locks the screen or turns it off. So that's a cool little feature. I actually love it a lot because I can just swipe it from the bottom from wherever I am and it will go away. Some other things like driving mode, which I'm not going to show you guys in this video. Um, wake lock blocker, active display from the Moto X. Omni switch is a cool little thing. Sometimes I, sometimes I use, I can switch between apps pretty quickly by dragging from the right side of the screen to the left from any app. Halo is an awesome little feature. 
um, where I'll show you guys a little bit later in the video. Custom progress bar. Uh, basically, when you install an app or anything along those lines where the bar is kind of scrolling across, mine's a bit modified. Build prop mods, I don't mess with too much though. Ad blocker is a cool thing. I actually have ad blocks at root level, so basically no ads display anywhere on the phone, um, no matter what. And definitely a cool area that I like to mess around with is animations. So one thing you guys may have noticed is as I'm scrolling through the settings and stuff, everything kind of flies in. So I'm gonna show you guys that in a second. Here I'm messing with the toast animations. So I'm making it like slide in, fade out. There's a lot of cool different ones that you can try. That right there is probably my favorite one though. And of course right there is the fade. So now I'm going to go with some keyboard stuff here. This is just how it enters and leaves. So I can choose many different ones, very similar to the um, toast animation there. You guys can see how the keyboard just slides on. So then I can have it slide off or fall down. And normally I don't enable this. So I'm just going to show you guys in this video for purpose of the video. But normally I don't enable it because I find it takes too long to start typing. So I usually leave it at default so that it doesn't do anything. But it is a cool little feature you can uh, apply, and it's something that I do apply. Scrolling speed is how fast you can scroll with your finger. List view is definitely the best one. You guys notice as I'm scrolling through my apps here, how they kind of like bounce off the edge of the screen. I can change those to many different things. Right now I have it to scale. Um, I can change it to different things. And then I can choose the other option. It'll kind of choose how it reacts. So you can have it like bounce off, you can have it accelerate and decelerate, you can have it, you know, kind of smoothly come in, go go insane, many different things, um, a lot of cool modifications you can do with this. Translate kind of has it slide in and then kind of flick at the end there, and but again you can choose that, can modify that as well using the other one. System, this is just some stuff um, like open inactivity animations. Um, so what happens if you change these and then you go through your settings or wherever and you're backing out, they kind of instead of just appearing, they'll kind of fade or slide or hitch as you see right now. So now I'm gonna show you guys my DPI. Now if I haven't if you guys didn't notice already, my apps and everything look much smaller. That's because I modify my DPI so that the phone kind of thinks it's a tablet. And what I get from that is a smaller everything. Now what you just saw there is Halo. Halo's a little little buddy. He comes out and when you tap on him, he will open whatever app you're in in a windowed mode. So I downloaded an app here that will allow me to create a fake notification. Now unfortunately the notification doesn't work completely properly compared to a normal notification because on Halo here, the message actually doesn't come out. But normally on, on like a Hangouts message or whatever, it'll come up with the person's name and their message and then the Halo icon will change to a like, picture of their face or whatever. Now you tap on Halo, it will open up the app in a multi-window mode. It allows me to drag it around, and what actually happens is it goes above whatever current app you're on. So then you can expand it to full screen, or you can simply just exit out of it. Now when you're done with the notification, you can drag up from Halo, and it will clear the notification from your status bar. Then I have Halo set to simply disappear. Now I'll show you guys the recent apps. And I'm I'm like normal Android recent apps for here. Just slides up about half the screen, and I see a preview of the first two or the latest two uh, apps that I've used. By long pressing a app, I can actually open up a multi window, and I can snap a app to either the top, bottom, left, or right. Then of course I can open up another app and snap it somewhere else. So I can snap it on top, I can leave it in multi-floating mode, or I can do this and kind of leave it in the middle. Unfortunately, I tapped the home button there by accident, so it exited out, but you guys get the point. The last modification I'm gonna show you guys, again, is maybe my favorite one, along with the nav bar slider, is tinted status bar. Tinted status bar basically means my status bar will tint to whatever the color is of the app. So as you guys can see, it tints to green, or whatever the color is of the current app. It's pretty awesome, and I actually love it a lot. And that's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. 
If you did, leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them below in the comment section. In the description of this video, I should have all the apps and pretty much everything you need to know about getting any of this stuff. Now, like I said though, a lot of it you do need root, especially for the modifications I've shown at the end. If you like this video, let me know if you want to see more. And besides that guys, thanks for watching. This is the Hacker Triple 07, and I'm signing off.